Good morning, my name is Beth Hooper and I'm a research assistant at the British Nutrition Foundation. This morning our learning objectives are to learn what is the Eat Well Plate, what are the main five food groups, where do different foods belong and what does a balanced meal look like. So how many of you have heard of the Eat Well Plate already? I imagine quite a few of you have. It's the UK's healthy eating guide which sets out the types and proportions of foods which make up a healthy, balanced and varied diet. It's divided into five food groups. As you can see, one third of the group is made up of bread, rice, potatoes, pasta and other starchy foods, and another third is made up with fruits and vegetables. It's important that we try and have foods from these groups at every meal, because they're the main groups. The final third is made up from milk and dairy foods, meat, fish, eggs, beans and other non-dairy sources of proteins. And then the smallest group is foods and drinks high in fat and sugar. We're recommended to follow the Eat Well plate to choose a variety of different foods from the four main food groups. So a healthy diet is a balanced diet and should contain a variety of foods from these groups. And it's important that we all remember that there's no good or bad foods, just foods that we should eat more of and foods that we should eat less of. Different foods provide us with different nutrients, so that means that we should never cut out a whole food group, otherwise our body won't get all the nutrients it needs to grow and to stay healthy. So the balance of foods in the Eat Well plate should be eaten over a day or two. Don't worry, it doesn't have to all be eaten in one meal. So the first group I'm going to discuss with you is the bread, rice, potatoes, pasta and other starchy food groups. All of these foods listed on the screen fit into this group and they should make up a third of our diet. They're very important as they provide us with energy so that we can be active and stay healthy. Hopefully some of you had these foods for breakfast today. So we should choose a variety of foods from this group and make sure that we have one with each meal. For example, for breakfast we could have wholemeal cereal, toast. For lunch we could have pita breads or rolls or a pasta salad. And for dinner, we can have rice or potatoes or pasta, and that will make sure we're really full up after a long day at school or work. Where possible, we should try and choose whole grain foods. So this is brown pasta and rice, and brown bread and wholemeal cereals. And these foods contain extra fibre, which is really important to keep a healthy gut. The next group I'm going to discuss should also make up a third of our plate, and this group is fruit and vegetables. So all frozen, fresh, dried and canned fruits and vegetables count, apart from potatoes, because they're in the starchy food category I just discussed. Some examples are on the screen, but there are many more, and even vegetables in sauces, soups and stews count, for example tomatoes in a pasta base sauce. So the government recommends that we should all try and eat five portions of fruit and vegetables a day in order to maintain good health. To make sure we get our five a day, we could have fruit with our breakfast cereal, or salad with our lunch, and vegetables with our dinner. Chopped up vegetables make a great snack too. And did you know that one of your five a day can even come from a glass of orange juice? So that's a really great start to the day. So fruit and vegetables provide us with lots of different vitamins and minerals, but different fruits contain different nutrients. For example, oranges contain vitamin C, and bananas contain lots of potassium. So to make sure that we get a good range of vitamins that the body needs, we should eat lots of different types of fruit and vegetables of all different colours. Do you think you could eat a different type of fruit every day this healthy eating week? So the next group I'm going to discuss is just as important, but we need slightly less of them, and this is milk and dairy foods. This group is mainly made up of cheese, yoghurt and milk, but as you can see from this slide, there are lots of different varieties. So foods from this group provide us with calcium, which is really important to help us grow healthy bones and to look after our teeth. That's especially important when we're young because it helps us to grow a really strong skeleton and to look after us when we're adults. We should try to have some foods from this group each day and could achieve this by having a yoghurt or cheese for lunch or milk with our breakfast cereal or a glass of milk before we go to bed. These foods can be high in fat though, so where possible we should choose semi-skimmed milk, low-fat yoghurts and softer cheeses. Now that I've discussed the milk and dairy food category with you, which of the foods below do you think you will find in this group? Eggs, cream cheese or cream? The answer was actually cream cheese. So well done to those of you that got it right. And for those of you that didn't, Eggs belong in the meat, fish, eggs, bean and other non-dairy sources of protein. And cream belongs in the category of who foods high in fat and or sugar. And we'll discuss that with you later in this e-seminar. So the meat, fish, eggs, bean and other non-dairy sources of protein is a really important category. 
And as you can see, there are lots of different types coming from plant sources such as nuts and beans, meats, fish and eggs. Protein is really important for growth as it helps us grow more cells and helps them repair. So that's especially useful when you're young because it helps you to grow. First of all, I'm going to discuss meat. Meat not only provides protein, but also with iron, which helps oxygen to travel around the body, and also with zinc, magnesium and B vitamins. Some meat can be high in saturated fat though, so it's important that we cut off the visible fat and skin and try to limit the amount of fried meat that we eat. It can be just as tasty baked, grilled, poached or steamed. We should also remember that some meat, such as bacon, ham and sausages, can be high in salt, so we shouldn't eat these meats too often. Fish is also a great source of protein, and it contains lots of micronutrients less common in meat, so it's important that we try to have a variety of protein-rich foods in our diet. The government recommends that we should try to have two portions of fish a week, one of which should be oily. An oily fish includes salmon, mackerel, tuna, sardines and kippers and the oils in these fish help to keep our hearts healthy. We can include fish in our diet by having a tuna sandwich for lunch or salmon fish cakes for dinner, or even fish and chips as a treat on a Friday night. Other sources of protein are beans, eggs, lentils, tofu and nuts. The final category that I'm going to discuss with you is foods high in fat and or sugar. This is the smallest group, but as you can see, these are often people's favourite foods. Some of these foods, such as oil and butter, you may eat every day in small amounts, but other foods, such as cream and biscuits and cakes, should be eaten in moderation less frequently. As I mentioned at the beginning of the e-seminar, all foods can be eaten as part of a healthy, balanced diet, and there aren't bad foods, just foods that we should eat less often. And these foods in this category should be eaten in moderation. We all probably eat some of these foods as I discussed, but foods high in fat are high in energy, and eating too many foods high in fat may increase our energy intake and lead to weight gain if we don't burn off that extra energy through activity. Having foods high in saturated fat can increase blood cholesterol levels and be bad for our hearts, so it's important that we don't add too much oil, fat or sugar when cooking, and that we choose healthy options where possible, such as reduced fat spreads, vegetable oils, rather than cooking in animal fats. Too much sugar will also increase our energy intake and may be bad for our teeth, so it's a good idea to choose sugar-free drinks where possible and to only eat sugary foods in moderation. But don't worry, a balanced diet is healthy and you can still have your favourite sweets now and again. Now that I've discussed the Eat Well plate with you, and I've explained that we need different amounts of foods to get all the nutrients our body needs, we've learned that foods in the largest category should be eaten more often, and those in the smallest group should be eaten less often, which of the foods below do you think should make up the biggest proportion of our diet? So the answer was fruit and vegetables and bread, rice, potatoes, pastas and other starchy foods. So just to recap, a third of our diet should be made up of fruit and vegetables, a third should be made up of starchy carbohydrates and the remaining third should come from dairy foods, proteins, and then a smaller amount from foods high in fat and sugar. We've looked at the Eat Well plate, but now let's see what that means for a balanced meal. So this is an example of a packed lunch made up of chicken, veggie sticks, a yogurt and a banana. So, the chicken is from the meat, fish, eggs, beans and other non-dairy sources of protein category, so we can tick that one off. The yogurt is from the milk and dairy foods. And the banana and the chopped up veggies of carrot and cucumber is from the fruit and vegetables section. You can see that they've also got this with the water, which is a great drink for lunchtime. But there's no starchy carbohydrate group. And although we said that you don't need to eat all of these foods every day with each meal, we should try and have foods from the main two categories of fruits and vegetables and starchy carbohydrates at every meal. So I'd suggest that this was improved by having a bread roll or a pita bread. So let's see how this one gets on. This meal is made up of chicken, a pasta salad, fruit juice, a pear and a yoghurt. So the meat category is ticked off with the chicken and the pasta. Milk and dairy products is ticked off with the yoghurt. The pear and the orange juice make one of our fruits and vegetables and there is a starchy carbohydrate in this. So I would say this is a balanced lunch and I think the person who had this probably had lots of energy in the afternoon.
Most dishes are made up of foods from different food groups and sometimes it can be really difficult to know where they sit in the Eat Well plate. So let's name the ingredients in these dishes and see where they belong. So we have beans on toast, a bean stew and a spaghetti bolognese. So beans on toast, the main ingredients in this are toast and beans. So the baked beans count as a fruit and vegetable and also a protein source and the toast wakes up as a starchy carbohydrate. So we can see here that there are ingredients from the main two food groups plus protein source. So I'd say this was a good balanced meal. The next dish we have is a bean stew. So this contains onions, carrots, tomatoes, peppers and celery, which is a great start to our fruit and veg intake. And then kidney beans, which are a protein source, and vegetable oil, which is from the foods high in fat. However, there isn't a starchy carbohydrate here, so I think this could be improved by either adding a bread roll or some pasta into the soup itself. So, do you think a spaghetti bolognese is a balanced meal? And correct, it is. So, a spaghetti bolognese contains tomatoes and onions, so as I mentioned earlier, even vegetables in sauces can count as our vegetable intake. It contains spaghetti, which is a starchy carbohydrate. Cheese, which I don't think there is on this picture, but I'd always add grated cheese to my spaghetti bolognese. Minced beef from the meat category. And vegetable oil from the foods high in fat and or sugar. So there you go, a spaghetti bolognese, a very balanced dinner. Thank you very much for listening to my e-seminar today. There's an Eat Well worksheet available on the website for you to download. And if you have any questions, I'd be pleased to answer them. Thanks very much. If you do have any questions for Beth, she's going to be around for a few minutes to answer those. I've, I've got a few questions for you, Beth. Uh, so while you're thinking about your questions, Jackie, in Blakeney School, Beth, perhaps you could answer some of my questions. I was wondering, where do our sweet potatoes fit on the Eat Well plates? So although normal potatoes fit into the starchy category, sweet potatoes do actually fit into the fruit and vegetable category because they don't contain quite as much carbohydrate. I see that Blakeney School's got a question for you. They'd like to know where seeds fit on the Eat Well plates. Seeds fit into the protein category. So if you'd like more information on that, I can get in touch later. But that will also be discussed on, Mon on Friday morning's e-seminar, so you can get more information there. And Blakeney School has another question asking, how much sugar should we eat? We should eat sugar in moderation and we should try not to add it to too many foods. But there are natural sugars in lots of fruits and vegetables, so we shouldn't cut these out. Thanks, Beth. And thanks everyone for joining in today.